Hey guys, it's Alex here and welcome to the Geeks Table. Here I do all kind of stuff related to tech and sometimes, quite often actually, I compare wireless chargers. We'll be looking at these today. These are all magnetic wireless tabs. Apple calls it MagSafe, Google brands it as Pixel Snap, but in the end they share the same idea. And my goal is to determine which one of these chargers is the best option for an iPhone. Feel free to use the chapters if you're in a hurry, otherwise let's dive into the topic together. The charging tabs are quite similar visually, but nevertheless, let's look at them a bit closer, starting with Apple. The new Apple MagSafe tab is a little bit thinner and also lighter. And the new one has a braided cable instead of the plastic one. But the main difference is the power that they can pass through themselves. The pad itself is soft, but I've noticed that it picks up dust quite easily, so be sure to clean it from time to time. Let's move on to another brand that you can find in the Apple Store and that's Belkin. It offers a thicker charger, but that's because it has a built-in stand. So the idea is that you can charge the phone while watching a video or doing a zoom call. The downside of this design is that the wire is not detachable. So it will stick out even if you just need a stand and not a charger. And of course it may be a bit tricky to use it in the portrait mode. The material of the pad is soft, but as with Apple, keep your Kleenex nearby. Moving on to the most affordable charger, Anker Zolo. But because it's much cheaper than the others, it has just the bare minimum. It's not as thin as Apple, and it doesn't have any extras like Belkin, and the pad is just made of plastic. So let's hope that at least it gets the job done. Next one is from Google, and well, Better late than never, they've joined the party with their Pixel Snap accessories. I was to praise Google for producing something different from black and white, but this color is very close to the standard silver. So I'll hold up with my compliments for now. The pad itself is soft and feels very much like Apple's charger, and overall it really shares the Pixel identity with all those rounded edges and stuff. But why didn't they place the Google logo on the back? Too shy? All right, and last but not least is Ugreen. This charger is of a higher price tier, at least in the EU, but the build quality and the materials are especially good. The cable is braided, the tab has places for the fingers to grab it, and the pad is soft as well. But oh boy, this charger is thick, especially compared to the Apple's one. Let's hope it will be good at heat dissipation. Finally, all of the chargers have strong magnets, but just know your limits. And while we are talking about magnets, I wanted to do a shout out on this creative magnetic stand from Alumu. It's very thin and also very light. It has a strong magnet, and like very strong, and its design definitely catches the eye. And when you rotate the stand, it even shows the grads. And overall, it brings the vibes of the nothing phone, if you will. The stand is very sturdy, yet flexible. If this angle is not very comfortable for you, you just rotate the stand like this, make the angle smaller, and it will still keep the phone in place. But the most unexpected thing was this little plastic knife hidden in the stand. I deal with packages all the time, so it comes in really handy. And it's pretty sharp for the paper and the sticky tape. Alumu has different types of accessories, so if you're into this design, do check their lineup. And disclosure, I got the stand from Alimu, but they didn't provide any payment or editorial input to any of my videos. Okay, so here are today's charges to compare. But you might ask, is there a problem really? Just go and buy any of them, they will charge the phone. Well, it all comes to the charging speed and supported models. On one hand, the chargers have different wattage. Wattage measures the amount of power transmitted from the charging pad to your device. Basically, it determines how fast the device can charge. Most of the charging tabs on the market support up to 15 watts of power, newer versions can go up to 25. On the other hand, there is your phone, and it may not even support the maximum wattage of the charger, so why pay more for the functionality that you may not even utilize? Come to think of it, it's actually a very good question for any purchase, to be honest. Anyway, as of now, Apple has these tiers of wireless charging. So if you have a mini, for example, you don't need a beefy 25 watt charger because your phone will barely use the half of its power. 
and I obviously don't have every phone, so I'll be using these models to represent each tier. If you have a different model, don't worry, this is how you apply my results to yours. Let's say you have an iPhone 13 Pro. It applies to the same tier as my 15 Pro Max. So please search for the iPhone 13 Pro battery capacity, then 15 Pro Max battery capacity, and now, once you'll see my table of battery percentage of the 15 Pro Max, you'll simply put each percent to this formula. And just like that, you turn my percentage into approximate value of yours. All right, let's have a look at the first tier and the iPhone 13 mini. This little phone can get really hot while charging, so Apple itself restricted the amount of wattage it can consume. But based on the results, it can get the maximum wattage in the very beginning. But then the protection kicks in and the wattage goes down. Overall, of course, the latest first-party charger was the fastest one. But surprisingly, Anchor was on par with Apple's first-generation charger. I say on par because my measurement equipment may introduce up to 10 minutes error, so I treat these results as almost identical. I don't know exactly what happened with Ugreen in this case, and moreover, this is not a one-time result. I repeated it three times, with and without equipment, and it seems that it gets overprotective, so once the phone gets hot, the protection just slows or disables the charging process completely. Usually it looked like this. The charging goes normally, and then completely stops until the temperature goes down. If we look at the battery percentage, especially the U-Green, we'll see those hiccups in 85, 89, and 98%. And overall, one hour of charging gives us between 24 and 42%, which in some cases is a lot, but it's far from what I would call a quick charge. And if we wish to get to at least 50%, we have to wait from 80 minutes to up to two hours. So maybe the second tier will be better. Let's have a look at the iPhone 15 Pro Max. What's interesting here is that both generations of Apple chargers showed the same result of 2 hours and 50 minutes. Looking at the wattage though, it seems that the second generation is more efficient. And to clarify the wattage situation, of course it changes every second, it's not a constant value. And here of course I use the approximate value, so don't treat it as if you will be getting these numbers constantly during every 10 minutes time frame. This situation with Belkin is something worth looking at. The wattage goes to zero, but did we get to 100%? Let's switch to the percentage. And this is the only charger that couldn't get the iPhone 15 Pro Max up to 100%. I performed this test three times with and without equipment, double check that all the battery optimizations are set to off, and yet Belkin just refused to proceed after 80%. Complete mystery. And as I said, both generations of Apple chargers managed to finish in 2 hours and 50 minutes, yet the second generation was slightly faster during the first hour. The other three did nothing remarkable in my opinion, with Ugreen being super slow yet again. So let's switch to the third tier with the iPhone 16. And finally things start to make sense again. Well, Apple is the best one more time, with Google being on the second place. In this case, Ugreen is on par with Belkin and even Apple's previous gen charger, but I couldn't help myself but notice this dip in wattage. And before we switch to percent values, do notice that the chargers never sustain the maximum wattage that you will likely see on their packaging. They might deliver it in the first 10 minutes, but then inevitably they will push it down to keep the temperature in the reasonable range. Switching to the percentage now, and as I've expected, that dip in Ugreen's wattage was indeed when the phone reached 80%. And overall, the iPhone 15 Pro Max could hit from 25 to 46% in 30 minutes, and to get to 50%, it took it from 50 to 60 minutes. And finally, let's switch to the fourth tier with the iPhone 16 Plus. Okay, bigger battery, high wattage, longer charging times. And this is finally when Ugreen could deliver. As I said, 10 minutes difference is not a difference because of the measurement equipment, so Ugreen and Apple chargers were the fastest. Let's switch to the percentage values, 
and the only hiccup was with Belkin over here. Otherwise, it's a stable curve. In 30 minutes you get from 23 to 37% and to get to 50% you have to wait from 50 to 80 minutes. And because this is the phone of the highest wattage tier and it can get particularly hot, I measured its temperature along the way. 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature when the battery is considered in the safe border, but if it goes up, it may get damaged. But anyway, we are rarely going even over 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So thanks to Qi2, at least we shouldn't be worried about the overheating. So before we wrap it up, a few closing words on each charger. Apple's chargers, no surprise, were the best. I mean, Apple alone knows the right points to push to make it the most efficient. Also, as far as I know, Apple is the only manufacturer that sells a 2 meters battery tab, which might be crucial for some people. Anchor is a budget option, no premium materials whatsoever, but it showed itself pretty good when being used with older iPhones. I can't say about the longevity, given the price, but if you have an iPhone of the 12, 13 or 14 lineup and you don't want to spend too much money, you may consider this accessory. Belkin is in a bit of a strange situation. It performed quite badly in the first two tiers, the ones where it was supposed to shine, and in the two other tiers it was naturally outperformed by other, more capable models. So the only unique feature that is left is the built-in stand. Pixel Snap by Google was right in the middle of all the tests, so if you can find it much cheaper than the Apple charger, go for it. It's nicely built, slightly heavier, but of the same size. If you have models before the iPhone 16, just keep in mind that you won't be using it at full capacity. Ugreen, well, it shows us what's coming from the third-party manufacturers in the upcoming months, and I would recommend it only to someone who has an iPhone 16 on Ua. Firstly because of the wattage, and also because how bad it performed with my 13 mini and 15 Pro Max. It's well built, quite thick, but it gives a nice alternative to the first party chargers. Alright, I hope you found answers to your questions, and hit a like if you did. As for me, I already have the first gen Apple charger, so I'll stick to it for now. My good old 13 mini and 15 Pro Max don't need extra power anyways. But which one would you buy? Or which one would you like me to test next? Let me know down in the comments and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's been Alex and see you at the Geeks Table. Take care.